Welcome everybody back to the shop. Today we've got a special day planned. We've got a customer coming by with an all electric maker pipe go-kart. We're gonna get the details straight from the builder and then take it outside to see what it can do. Stay tuned. Hey. Alex, welcome. Hey. How are you? Good. How nice you doing? Nice to meet you, finally. Yeah, nice to meet you. And you, and you brought it today. Yes, I did. It looks fantastic. That's my Prague creation. Yeah. Been I working guess. on it for quite a while, and uh, this is the final product, I think. Uh, this is version, I believe it's 5 or 4. Wow. And uh, probably have uh, one more version, make it better. Yeah. Always, right? We're still working on it. Yeah, it's yeah. not a never-ending work, right? Right. Well. I'm excited to, to take a look. Let's get it in the shop. How's that sound? All right, that sounds All right. great. All right, let's do it. Alex, this is fantastic. Now that we got it up, so we can really take a good look at it. Um, I'm most curious about the maker pipe frame, right? I, I mean, that's a little bit selfish of me, but tell me, <laughs> how did you decide on using maker pipe for this go-kart frame? Well, uh, it was an experience, I tell you, because at the beginning when I started making this uh, go-kart, I worked on the main part of the go-kart, which is the frame. And uh, my first frame was welded together. Uh -huh. But then after I finished my first prototype, I discovered I needed to make some changes. And with a welded frame, there's nothing you can do. Yeah, you can cut it, re-weld, but if you make a mistake, then you got to do that over and over again, right? So right. I thought, that's not going to work. So then what I, it occurred to me that if I can put a frame together with clamps somehow, I can, that allow me to work on the specific of the frame until I finish it and then get it complete the way I want it, you know? And uh, right. whenever I needed to make some changes, I can adjust the clamp, move it back and forward without destroying the frame and you uh, know, make it a new one. Right. So then I went on the website again. I seen all the clamps out there and then I searched for different other type of uh, clamps available. And then when I popped this T-clamp pop on the <laughs> website, I saw, yeah. hey, you know, and specifically on underneath the, the clamp, the picture is said specifically for EMT. My eyeballs just <laughs> almost popped out. And so I linked on it and it takes me to the makeitpipe.com site. And I read on it, you know, read on about the clamps and the product Maker Pipes has. Yeah. And I said, hey, this thing can work for me. It says it's specifically for EMT. This is what I was looking for. And I was frustrated before because I couldn't find something like this. So I went ahead and ordered some and built my first frame on it. Uh huh. And I saw that, that how great it was. I can take it apart whenever I want it and put it back together. If I made, made a mistake. I just took the clamp off and replaced the piece right away. And I was back in the same, you know, position that I was at the time making it. And, and well, that's how I, 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 I became to use a maker pipe. Well, well, that's exciting. Not only that you, you found us, you know, and I'm so excited you did, but that it's also helped you kind of iterate and improve your design. That's yes, a really indeed. cool thing to hear. Yes. Um, I see you use maker pipe for, you know, the actual frame itself, but you have a lot of other uses of the connectors. Tell me about some of the, the other uses, the more non-traditional ones. Yes. As I was building the frame and once I had it done and then I needed to 
mount the other parts that go with the, with the frame, uh -huh. I discovered that I can use your clamps for all the areas of the cart. And this has uh, different sections. We have the front end, which the panels go mounted, the foot rest for the brakes, the mechanical brakes. And we have the steering system as well. The, the mechanical brakes right there. Yes, this is the mechanical brakes. I offer mechanical brakes with uh, foot rest. Okay. I also have the panel mounts, as you can see. Right. I also discovered I can use the steering system with, with the clamps as well. I didn't like the way the steering wheel was mounted on the cart. Uh -huh. So I discovered I can use one of your clamps and that was beautiful. I mean, that was, <laughs> I was so excited when I discovered that. Yeah. And as another particular piece of this uh, steering system is this piece down here, which is called the pitman. This part can cost you anywhere from 60 to 100 bucks, depends on what, where you get it from. Yeah. So I discovered I can use that for this too. And the beauty about this is that I can align in the wheel with the steering system is kind of tricky. Uh -huh. So once you set it in place, that's it, right? If it turns out to be crooked or something like that, you have to start all over. Uh, so these allowed me to calibrate it, move it around until I have it set. Yeah. If I need to, I can just put a hole in there and you know set it in place firmly right. forever. And that was a great thing. From then on, I discovered I can do the driver's seat using the same clamps. And this is great for me because I can move this car seat and adjust it for whatever the height of the driver is. So right? if the driver is a small kid, I can move it forward, I can move it backwards and sustain with the clamps. I can send it right in there. If I make a mistake, I can just work with it. Mm -hmm. And it's just been awesome. And I love it. That's fantastic. Yeah, I love the, the bends that you put right. into the conduit. Are you, you using a, a pipe bender to do that? Yes, I'm used to a pipe bender. Uh, back where I used to work, uh, I used to work with uh, electrical crews. Yeah. And they showed me how to use bending machines. And... Oh, great. <laughs> nice. And that's where I learned how to bend. So I'm not perfect at it, but hey, I try. Yeah, it looks <laughs> looks good to me. Yeah, so if we keep moving on the back, uh, the only thing I discovered was a problem for me is mount on the brake system okay. on the rear axle. Right. And uh, this was always a problem because here you have to be precise, mm -hmm. coordinating the caliper to the brake disc. Okay, so what your clamp allowed me to do is, while I'm putting it together, I can move the clamp around, up and down, left and right, to set the caliper on the disc. Right. Once I have it in place, I can just tight that screw in. If I have a problem with it, I can put another one in there and make it better. So far, it's been working great. And that was a great hug too. I love that. And uh, what I like the most about this is that parts for go-karts are very expensive, you know, and uh, with a $3 clamp, I can save a lot of money and that's great. That's good. That's one of my <laughs> favorite things about the business is hearing what people build and then also that they can save money too. Yes. And uh, the last part I work on, which is the, la the, 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 the less latest version of the go-kart, is the motor mounts on the back. I have, I use skateboard motor, uh, motors, mm -hmm. brushless motors. So I use two of these on, on the back. Yeah. And I build this mounting system where I use about uh, one, two, three, four, eight clamps. And I build this flame this frame for the motors itself and I mount it on the cart. And this too allows me to be flexible as to how do I mount it on it because the motors needs to align with the pulley wheels and I need to readjust it mm. time and time and again until they match. Right. And what you clamps allow me to do is, is that really, set it up in place, if I make a, a position, a mistake on it that I can just realign it until I get it right. And once I get it right, then I can fix it in place and it'll stay there forever, which is yeah. great. That, that's my latest addition to the go-kart and it's working fabulous for me so far. Nice. Yes. I love the non-traditional uses of the connectors, you know, and I, I get a question a lot about um, the strength of the connectors and yes. what you can build, right? Okay. And I think 
um, the way that you've modified the connectors in some points has given you that strength or yes. it, it seems like it has, you know, you've, what right. you've done is you've, you've drilled and then run a bolt through the connector and the conduit right. in places where you needed that extra rigidity. Yes. So far I built my first one. I did not make any modifications to the clamps itself, but as I tried my go-karts and due to the G forces on the, when you run it, right. Then I saw some something that needed improvement as far as my application. Yeah. And that's why I did, did this. I got certain points where there are key points, like driving this, uh, making a hole here and this extra screw to hold the frame together in key points where it's not going to move anywhere. Yeah. So the car keeps intact and, and you know doesn't become a part, I guess. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's working great so far. That's that's fantastic. I, I know people are going to want to hear about the electronics. Now, obviously, this is an all electric go kart. Yes, it is. Right. And it goes pretty fast. Yes. As we're going to find out. Uh, but tell us a little bit about the powertrain okay. of the go kart. When I, when I made a go kart, I decided I didn't want a gasoline part because gasoline is kind of, you know, combustible, flammable, dangerous. And sure. I didn't want my children to do that refueling and, and mess around with gas. So yeah. electrical for me was the best option. I may, might be because I'm an electrical guy, electrical engineer, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. But uh, yes, uh, and I decided to make it where batteries are safer. And I decided to make it specifically with drilled batteries because they are, everybody uses them. Any kid can use a drill. We all have battery, battery drills. We all right. have these batteries. Our kids can charge them anytime. Yeah. So that's the of, of, of the batteries um, behind it. And then from there, I needed to work on what sort of controller I needed to put power into the motors. And this is a controller we use on the skateboard world. Huh. It's called uh, electronic speed controller, ESCs. Yeah. So right now I'm using cheap versions of controllers because to prove the concept of the car, I need to keep it low and so at least invest in the car and see what, uh, you know, what works well. So far with this controller, it works well. My goal was to design a car that hit 26 miles per hour because a child on safe speed from 26 and under is a safe speed I, in my, in my belief. Yeah. If you go any higher than that, it's a little bit of risky. Uh -huh. And uh, that's controller, that, that's what that does. Right. So in essence, you have a, uh, a speedometer here. You have a battery power. The battery power can be 36 volts, or you can have a 48 volt for more torque, more mm. push, yeah. faster speed. Now you have a remote here. I don't use a foot pedal, if you notice. I use a remote. The reason I use this remote is it works with the controller on the back here, is because the remote offers speeds one, two, three, four speeds, and each speed has a limit. Oh, okay. Each, yes, so it gives the kid the option to say he's too afraid. I know my children started riding this car and were afraid of, of this going beyond 18, 20 miles per hour. Uh -huh. So this gives him a choice to go in first, second, third speed, and each one has a, well, can go up to 12, 16, 18, 26. That's really nice, hour, okay? yeah. It's a, it was a safety concern, and uh, so that communicates with the controller. Uh, and at the same time, this remote has a uh, electronic power braking, where if you pull the switch towards the back, it'll coast your motors and brake them. So I offer two brakes, the electronic brake, mm -hmm. and I offer a mechanical brake as an emergency brake. Great. We normally drive, we don't need to use the mechanical, this is su sufficient enough for us to stop and go. That's what we usually do it. Yeah. Yes. So the car as it is, that's 26 miles per hour tops if you drive it on 36 volts. But if you drive it on 48 volts, you get to that speed faster. Yeah. So it's uh, exciting with 24 volts. Not only drives a kid of uh, about 120 pounds at a good speed, but it can drive me too. Of course, the greater the load, the weight of the person, the slower it is. Mm -hmm. But I drive this car myself and it just handles great. Yeah, and that's that's pretty fast. That's impressive. I know. And uh, let me see. The, I guess the next 
thing I'm working on is going beyond 26 miles per hour. And for that, what I need to do is change the controller. Uh -huh. There are controllers out there. There are the top brands that I'm not using right now uh -huh. that will give me an excess of 36 miles per hour. Wow. So that's the next thing I'm going to work. That's why we'll be on the next version. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it takes me some time to get it there, but uh, that, that's the next adventure I'm going to do. Right. Well, and, you know, not everybody needs that 36 miles an that's hour, right? right? Yes. For for a, a son or daughter that, right. that wants to get into it and get going, you've got the different governors, which I think is really cool to make it uh, approachable for them. I believe this is a safe uh, the speed is the speed it is a safe part for a child uh, at least 14 under it's just yeah. perfect for them so yeah. i can experience that you know and have a lot of fun right that's why i have a lot of fun that was my goal really have a lot of fun my kids have fun with this so yeah I, that's great we're we're excited to see that and so uh other than the the top speed working on the top speed what other other plans do you have for your go-kart project uh, so far, I'm just working on uh, cosmetics, really, and maybe body work and uh, uh, maybe the painting or for different things. Oh, there's another specific thing I use for makeup, product, which is the heat shrink. Oh, yeah. So I first I made my paints and my frames with uh, paint. And that's a lot of work, you know, yeah. so you got to do the primer, or the paint, and sure. the clear coat. Yeah. But I noticed that the frame doesn't last as long. It starts chipping off, the paint starts crashing off. So, you know, then I saw that in your website, you have the hit shrink available. Right. I decided to try that. Mm -hmm. And uh, this just did a phenomenal job. Oh, good. You know, we ride these cards and I just paint doesn't damage like it's just like the first day i made it it, it At really least does my other that. ones this one only wrote it one time one or twice mm -hmm. and uh but the other ones it's just like new so that's another convenience and that saved me a lot of work as well using your the wrap for the emp so that's yeah. great i i didn't notice at first that no. it that it was the wrap but it looks <laughs> that's it what looks it is good and it's held up that's great i'm glad to hear that so my next thing yes it's just uh, cosmetics really uh making it faster Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not sure what else I can use pipes anywhere else. I think uh, I'm just about done, unless I build something on top of it or something, maybe a, <laughs> an outdoor car, ATV or something like that. <laughs> sure, yeah, or a, a cage or something like yes. that. That'd be really neat. <laughs> but well, for that's... now, my uh, I guess the next step of this uh, card for me is that um, find families that uh, would like to, one of the children's, to have one of these cards and uh, if they like to you know obtain one of this they can go ahead and contact me and then i can have a way to deliver one of that you know with these cards to them and see if they want to experience what my children have experienced and then let them have fun and uh that will be the next step too and you know trying to formulate some type of business so i can um offer it to to the public Right. Yeah. And, and I think that's great because, um, you know, a lot of the go karts, as I understand it, are DIY. Yes. Right. And for somebody that wants to get started quickly yes. and get out there in a safe way, in a fun way, uh, this would be a great option for them that you've that you've put together all the systems and, and it's ready to go. As a matter of fact, when I first started making it, I was out there trying to shop for some cart for my children. Uh -huh. I had previously bought power wheels but power wheels are for fast at five and under so there was nothing out there that resembles the actual go-kart right and that was my idea of building it at first i wanted to make something that uh, resembled the actual street go-kart yeah and that's why i set up and to make it and now i can offer it to somebody that wants to experience the same thing that i experienced in my children so that's they great. enjoy it, so that's that's all I care about. Yeah, that's fantastic. <laughs> a, a couple things, like kind of technical questions, come to mind. How long do the batteries last? How much fun can you have? Okay, depending on the weight of the driver, electricity is complicated. You know, sure, it's yeah. not up there. Right. <laughs> it's but, different if I get on there versus <laughs> your exactly son. Exactly, my kid. Uh, you know. Right. And uh, but I tested it so far. Generally, if you have a Dewalt 
I recommend a minimum of six amp power battery. If you have a 36 volts, then you can have a runtime with a six amp power battery. You can have a runtime of about 40 minutes. Or so. Wow. Okay. Yeah. 30 to 40 minutes, depending on the weight of the driver. Of yeah. Course. That's that's fantastic. If you jump to a 48 volts, it's faster. Depending on the size and pressure of the battery, too, you can have the same thing. Right. Now, if you want to have a good time for an hour or so, yeah, you can have a, I recommend a 10 amp, ba amp ba battery power. Right. You can do great with that for about an hour or so. Boy, but I mean, 45 minutes, you'd be tired by the uh, yeah, time that's, that's done, right? The good thing about the battery is that uh, if you go on to DIY, if you build your own batteries, because I build my own batteries as well, mm -hmm. then there are charges that the charging is the problem. It takes six, eight hours to charge. Oh, yeah. But that's the reason why I use drill batteries, because they have fast charges that can charge your battery in matters of an hour, an hour and a half. Oh, that's great. And so you're back you have out two there. sets of batteries, you can have what charging while you have the, you know what I mean? The other oh. one you're riding on it. So yeah. that's the reason I use DeWalt batteries. And they have controls, safety controls inside that if they get heat up, then they shut down. And when they power goes to the limit, there's a limit there that just shuts you, shuts them down. You know, gotcha. so safety, safety thing that they have. Well, thanks so much, Alex, for explaining all the details. I, I really think it's fantastic and you did an awesome job. Uh, I think the only thing left now is to take it outside and, and see what it'll do. What do That's you think? Right. That's right. So let's go check it out. And uh, I hope everybody enjoys it. So, uh, and I'd like to take this opportunity to invite your customers, your viewers to my channel, DIY EK. Okay. DIY EK. DIY EK, Diet channel. Observe the, all the videos we have and how much fun my kids are having. And I'm uploading videos as I go, improve the car, the new models I'm going to make. And, uh, Please visit my channel and subscribe. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll we'll put a link in the description down below to Alex's channel. And uh, let's get outside and see what this go-kart will do. That's great. Wow, that was awesome. And I wanna thank Alex. Thank you so much for coming out today and showing us your electric go-kart. If you wanna see more of his carts, go to his YouTube channel, DIY EK. And again, we'll link it in the description below. And as always, be safe. I think Alex has done a great job using Maker, maker Pipe for the frame, uh, but we just wanna make sure that everybody's safe with their builds and build within their limits. So thanks everybody, and we'll see you soon.